On a fateful day in the political landscape, Donald Trump's words echoed with an air of mystery and intrigue. As the nation watched, he extended an invitation to Russia, not through diplomatic channels, but on a public platform, urging them to unearth Hillary Clinton's elusive emails. Russia, if you're listening, I hope you're able to find the 30,000 emails that are missing. I think you will probably be rewarded mightily by our press. But the story took a sinister turn just minutes after Trump's provocative call. Across the vast digital expanse, Russian hackers, operating from three discrete locations, launched a clandestine assault. Their target, the inner sanctum of Hillary Clinton's campaign for the presidency. Like unseen phantoms, they bombarded the campaign staff with phishing emails. It was a digital siege aimed at breaching the fortress of Clinton's secrets. And it would work beyond the wildest dreams of the man who was paying out of pocket for all of this. Vladimir Putin, Russia's supposedly elected leader, but in reality, an authoritarian dictator of the worst kind. And Putin desperately wanted Trump to win. The hacking and embarrassing of Hillary Clinton would maybe, just maybe, give him a fighting chance. Nobody would know just how successful the hacking of Clinton's campaign would be until October 7, 2016. On that fateful day, a seismic revelation reverberated across the airwaves. The infamous Donald Trump Access Hollywood tape was unleashed, exposing the candidate in a moment of unguarded candor. I'll admit it. Whoa. I did try and fuck her. She was married. <laughs> huge news, Sarah. No, no, Nancy. Yeah. No, this was marriages. And I moved on her very heavily. In fact, I took her out furniture shopping. I don't even wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab them by the pussy. <laughs> Just anything. nine minutes after this bombshell revelation, WikiLeaks, the enigmatic messenger of secrets, began to leak from John Podesta's inbox. WikiLeaks releasing the newest batch of what are believed to be campaign chairman John Podesta's hacked emails. One showing just how much Clinton's team struggled to get her to apologize. Lost in all this was that the other guy had admitted on tape to taking another woman furniture shopping while his actual wife was home alone, having just given birth to their son, Baron Trump. Oh, and also grabbing women by the pussy to get his jollies. But most women were really angry about the furniture shopping thing more than anything else. That was a bridge too far for most ladies. Next time on Frontline, Donald Trump's right-hand man for so many years, Michael Cohen talks openly about how his boss spoke to him like the leader of a crime family, the death of his ex-wife Ivana Trump, what exactly Donald Trump was doing on January 6th, and we learn his reaction to Cassidy Hutchinson's testimony on Capitol Hill. All this next time on Frontline on your local PBS station. The parody broadcasting system were real, just like Snuffleupagus.